Hey everyone, welcome back. So I wanted to use this vlog as a way to document a challenge that I gave myself a couple weeks ago. Uh, and that was to basically write a guitar piece, probably just for solo guitar, and write it, learn it, and then record it in four weeks, and then at the very end release it on Spotify, and shoot a video for my YouTube channel, and then at the very end had the sheet music available to you guys on my website. I figured I'd use the blog as a way to kind of keep myself accountable, and just make sure I get everything done on a deadline, which is kind of hard when you have a full teaching schedule. Um, but I also thought it'd be kind of cool to walk you guys through my process too. So you can kind of see how I work, maybe compare it to how you work. If you have any tips for me, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm always trying to get better at this kind of thing. Um, but basically, I just wanted to compose a solo guitar piece just for fun. I haven't really written a solo classical piece in a while, uh, mostly because writing for solo classical guitar is really annoyingly hard. Usually I write for either two guitars, quartet. I do a lot of solo guitar arrangements, uh, mostly for my students, sometimes for YouTube. Uh, a lot of guitar quartet arrangements for my college ensemble, just to keep things interesting so we're not playing like the same rep over and over again. Which as a classical guitar ensemble, it's kind of hard to avoid sometimes. So basically today my goal is just to grab my guitar and run through a bunch of scales and try to come up with a melody and some harmony and just some general elements I can use for the composition. Also when I start composing, I like to set a bunch of just arbitrary limits for myself when I sit down to actually write. So that way you don't get kind of paralysis of the blank page kind of thing. You just look at the blank sheet music and you're just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. You forget how to do music altogether. So what I usually do is just come up with some arbitrary limits, like for instance on this one, I'm gonna to try to keep it fairly short so I can actually you know, write the whole thing, learn it, record it, only in about four weeks or so. Um, so it can't be that long. I'm not gonna to try to record like a Brower Sonata or something, or try to rewrite another Brower Sonata. So I'm gonna to try to keep it fairly short, probably ABA, generally 4-4, and just from kind of thinking around in my head, I want it to be a little bit jazz influenced just because that's generally the music I write anyway. Usually, I can write in other styles, but usually when I try to compose something for myself, it's not exactly a jazz piece, but it has a lot of kind of jazz harmony, or sometimes it'll have kind of a modal thing, it'll have triads, but not necessarily functional harmony. Um, basically, I'm not going for like a sword Giuliani kind of thing. Um, if I had to compare it to something, it'd be more like Brower, Roland Deans ish kind of tonal palette, um, which is just generally what draws my ear. I also want it to be easy enough in difficulty that I can actually use this probably as a student piece. Um, so that way it doesn't have a bunch of just crazy scale runs and arpeggios. It might have some tricky stuff, but I don't want it to be super hard. Also, I still want to be able to play this in four weeks and not have to practice it too much. Um, because again, full teaching schedule. Don't exactly have too much time between that and then shooting videos and stuff for the channel. So I'm gonna take one last sip of this coffee, grab my guitar, and then I'll get started. All right, so I have my guitar. So basically what I'm gonna do now is just kind of run through some chords, noodle, move some shapes around the neck, kind of hum to myself in a really weird, odd fashion that I don't normally let people see. And hopefully by the end of this, I have something that kind of resembles an A melody and a B melody, and I have some ideas as to what the harmony might be, maybe some cool chordal ideas. Usually when I write, I, I have my guitar being recorded through my DAW right now so I can go back and listen to it. Kind of a pro tip. Sometimes when you're noodling, you'll come across a thing, play it once perfectly, and then maybe when you play it again, it's not quite the same thing. And sometimes if you record your kind of compositional practice sessions, you'll come across a little thing that the first time you played it was kind of magic, and then you can go back and then write it down and then try to practice it and kind of capture that lightning in a bottle thing. Um, so pro tip, kind of try doing that when you're recording. So what I like to do too is to kind of just throw a bunch of ideas and loosely sketch some things. When I compose, I generally don't write like, this is measure one, and then just write it in stone, go on to measure two, write measure two. I find that gets me writer's block really, really fast. It's hard to just find something that goes right after every measure and to me, when I compose that way, by the end of it, it almost seems like the piece kind of spirals out of control because I'm just trying to just hang on and write something that kind of follows the thing that came before it. Whereas if I do compositional sketches, meaning I'll write like a snippet of, you know, like an A theme, maybe I'll go back and write like, oh, this is a cool chord I want in there at some point. Or maybe I have an unrelated little, you know, B theme or C theme, or maybe I have some cool arpeggio pattern that I want to fit in there. And if I keep these kind of loose sketches, 
usually what I'll do is just kind of sketch for a couple days and then at the very end I'll try to just start kind of stitching everything together have a loose idea of the form of the piece and that way it's a little bit more coherent I know people do it different ways but that's generally just how I write um, it takes a little bit of the stress off so you might try that um, so let me play through some things um, I might time lapse this because this will take a little bit but let's see where this goes A few moments later. Okay, so I think I have a couple of melodies that I think will work. The first one, loosely, I want to say is uh, something more or less like. I can't tell if that last note's going to be a counter melody or some kind of a actual melody. I basically decided that I'm going to try to keep the melody more or less kind of a pentatonic thing, um, just so it gives me more room to play with the modes underneath the chords. I might have some kind of wacky reharms or something like that, where I reharmonize like a single, you know, instead of this being like a D minor triad, you can reharmonize that kind of a thing to like a, you know, the, be the seventh of another chord. I don't know, just trying to mix it up. And as far as a B theme goes, I might just do like a really simple kind of B half diminished thing. Throw some whole tone stuff in there. It feels a little Debussy-ish with the. Until the very end. And I'm pretty sure the piece is probably going to be in D minor, which according to Spinal Tap is the saddest of all keys. So for you young guitarists out there, take note. Also watch Spinal Tap. <laughs> but yeah, I think it'll probably be in D minor. I may or may not do drop D depending on how my chords shape up. But more or less, that's kind of, you know, how I start the process. So make sure to tune in next week, and then you can see kind of how I developed that, how I reharmonized it. Hopefully I have most of that done, um, and then I can start moving on to the recording phase. So I'll see you guys in the next video.